hearts back towards you. I pray that tonight people would take this time in discipleship as a time of growth, a time to move forward, a time to attain to the things of God while we still have time. So we pray uh, your, your hand, your purpose, Father, and all that you would have for us tonight in this time of Bible, in this time of discipleship, and we pray the effectiveness. Father, we pray the fruit of this to be made evident in the days and weeks to come, and we pray that in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Listen, you know, the last time that we were here, I know, I know that we, we, we got into a, a little bit of this, uh, the, the process of, of uh, when we were talking about being born again. Somebody remember when we talked about regeneration? How many were here when we talked about that? We've been going through some doctrinal uh, 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 topics and, I, and things that I think are important for you to know about your faith and, and what we profess and what we believe as a family and as a church. If you didn't get a chance to write this down, let me encourage you to, to write this down. If you were not here uh, during the time where I said that some of the processes or some of the, the evidences that you are born again are found right in here. And so we've, uh, we went through some of these things where uh, the people who are born again are, are living right. They, they, they've stopped sinning. They have a love for God, for others, for the things of God. They are overcomers. And I use scriptures in each one of these. If you need to go to the church DVR and refresh your mind to get that, let me encourage you to do that. And then certainly we talked about how those people who are, who are born again, the enemy can't touch them uh, as he would someone else. And so I wrote these things down. One of the, one of the evidences, in fact, in fact, I wanted to go back and just touch on this just for a minute because I wrote down some things. How many remember when I was sharing with you that one of the things that, that I, I experienced, and I know many of you are experiencing, did, did y'all get this down? Did everybody get a chance to write it down? I'll go from the very top, uh, that, that the fruit of, the, of, of our regeneration is evidenced in righteousness, Okay. It's evidence in the people and the fact that they've stopped sinning. How many, in fact, how many want me to just go over that real quick? Because I want to build on something. Let me, let me do this real quick. Let me see if I can get my, get, my, uh, get my Bible. Let's go to the first John chapter 3. I'm going over some old notes here in case you just entered in. We are going through church doctrinal issues. Tonight I'm going to introduce something to you that I believe is going to be important, paramount for the next couple of weeks. And I'm going to share some stuff that I believe is going to be a blessing to a lot of people. Because I'm convinced there are some people here today that need a victory somewhere in your life. How many today have something, just by a show of hands, today you have something that you need God to do for you that can't be done unless God steps in and does it? Okay, so, so you came on the right night because God's got something in store for you tonight. We're going to do something for you tonight that I believe is going to be a huge blessing for your life right at the end of our service. Let's do this. Let's go to 1 John chapter 3. I'm going to build on something. 1 John, in fact, I think I was going, in fact, let me just go to 1 John 2. I'll go, I'll go, that way we won't have to flip back pages and go back here and go back there. Let's just go to 1 John, the, 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 the first epistle of John, 1 John chapter 2, and then slide your finger down to verse 29, and, 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 and I want, uh, we're actually talking about, in fact, let me get my eraser, what we're actually talking about when we were here last time, we were talking about regeneration. How many in their notes marked or remarked in your notes, who does the work of regeneration? The Holy Spirit. And remember I told you regeneration is an act of God upon us, not you upon God, because you didn't choose God, he chose you. Now that is a distinctive. Church family, listen, I, you know, I, I, when, when I'm talking to my son Daniel and I'm teaching him doctrine, I tell him that is so important that you understand that you didn't, have a, you didn't have anything to do in the saving of your soul. God acted upon you. See, because when a man thinks, the Bible says, it's not by works this man would what? Would boast. So we all have to come to some concession, some, some time of silence before God and say, Lord, I want to thank you. I want to thank you, God, for taking me and rescuing me from death. Somebody say hallelujah. I mean, that's a pretty big point. You won't see how big a point that is until you meet the Lord for yourself. Somebody say hallelujah. So we are talking about the word regeneration, but how many remember what it's equivalent to? Does anybody here remember what that was? Being born again, thank you. And how many know Jesus said you must be what? Born again. This, is a, this, is a, this process here 
is not something that you're going to do of yourself. You can't reborn yourself. God has, to, God has to be involved in your rebirth. Okay. And so what we did was we began to talk about some of these things. And this is so important that we, that we go through this. Look at 1 John chapter 2, 1 John chapter 2, verse 29 says, If ye know that he is righteous, ye know that everyone that doeth righteous is what? Born of him. So righteous people are righteous and do righteous because what? They've been born again. Somebody say hallelujah, man. That's a, that's a beautiful thing to say. 1 John chapter 3, verse 9 says, Whosoever is born of God, what does the Bible say? Does not commit sin. Thank you, Brother Jordan. So whoever is born of God, they stop sinning. And, and, and the evidence of that is the very fact that the Holy Spirit dwells within us. Somebody say glory. That's a powerful, profound work of the kingdom of heaven. 1 John chapter 4, verse 7. Look what it says here. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is what? So we have a love for God and for others. So people who are born again, you know them, and I've said this before, one of the, one of the, one of the characteristics of people who are born again is they have a love for the brethren. I mean, that is, that, is, that is probably one of the biggest evidences I've seen in my life, 17 years or 18 years of preaching, is that people that are born again, they love each other. That, 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 that's just what that is. 1 John chapter 5, verse 3 says this, For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. For whosoever is born of God, what does the Bible say? Overcomes the world. Right? We have a new value system. Somebody say glory to God for that. I have a new value system. And then 1 John chapter 5, verse 18, it says this. We know that whosoever is born of God, look what it says, sinneth not, but he that is begotten of God keepeth himself. So we understand that there's a discipline, right? We keep ourselves in, in, the, in the spiritual discipline of God, but we also know what? And the wicked one toucheth him not. Right? Somebody say, praise the Lord. Let me tell you something. That wicked one, we get a depiction of him as a roaring lion. Walking to and fro, seeking who what? He may devour. So we've got an adversary. Okay. But the Bible says that people who are born again, the wicked one can't what? Can't touch it. Somebody say hallelujah. I thank God for that. So we went through that. And if, and if you want to you know, go through that one more time on, on the DVR, you can do that. I wrote down some things here. Did everybody get that? Is everybody okay? If you didn't get it, you're going to have to go get it on the DVR. Amen, because i got to keep moving because we don't got too much more time. Let me write down. I wrote down a couple things that I want to talk about because I'm going to lead you into something tonight that I believe is going to bless you in the name of the Lord tonight. But I wrote down some things about that conversion, that place where, I'm not going to say conversion, my regeneration when I was born again. And, and, and I want to write down a few things, all right? Because, and, and you tell me, for some of you that have been through that, know what the be how beautiful it was, the day of your salvation, that some things transpired in you. And I wrote down some things. In fact, let me, ju let me, just, let me just say them. Uh, that that uh, on the day of my conversion, these are just thoughts of my own. You may have some that you may add to that. Uh, uh, and praise the Lord, because each one of us uh, had some different things. So this is certainly not a, uh, not a list that's completely conclusive or or exclusive of some of the experiences you had. But let me tell you a few things that happened to me. The day that I got saved, I put my trust in Jesus. There was a faith in me to trust God. And, I, and I'm talking about trusting him with my life. Somebody say hallelujah. I also remember that I had assurance that my sins were forgiven. How many remember that? That, that, that when you got saved, you, you confessed your sins and, and you knew somewhere in that prayer, as vague and as simple as it was, that you were forgiven of God. And there was a, a heart back towards the Lord in thanksgiving and gratitude. The other thing I noticed is that I had a desire to read my Bible. Now, now, now that, that, I'm not saying that I hadn't read my Bible before. I'm just saying that there was a new thing inside of me that desired the Word of God. I had, you know, I desired to milk, you know, I wanted... I wanted not only to read my Bible, but I wanted to be in church to hear the word preached. You know, I wanted fellowship. I wanted to be around the saints of God. Somebody say hallelujah. 
And even more importantly in there is I had a desire to pray and I believe that when I prayed, God was hearing me. So I'm going to stop right there. Did y'all get that? I, I, I want to write this down. Can I get that? Can I, let me write this down, okay? I had a desire for God's Word to a desire to pray That coupled with, uh, let me just say, I'm going to say a belief Did y'all see that? Now I want you to read this with me. And let me see if I, let me see if I let me see if I got this right here. And I'm gonna go over here to my notes because this is where I want to pick up. Because I want to read something to the family of God. And hopefully I hopefully I wrote this down. And if I don't have it, I'll just share it with you. And I want to say it was in it was in First John. And the Bible says, and we have this confidence. I mean, know this. That when we pray, let me see. First, first John, let me see, chapter 5, 14, there we go. I'm using my new Bible. A lot of these verses used to be highlighted. Now I'm having to restart with the new Bible. Look what it says here. First John chapter 5, verses 14. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Now, now, now I want you to stop and, 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 and just for a second wipe off anything or thoughts or ideas or past, you know, whatever, whatever you've been through, however you've gone through what you've gone through. I want you to stop and understand what the scriptures are teaching us that we should have a confidence that when we pray, God hears us. Now that's a distinctive. Church family, listen, the enemy can, can you know, a lot of times people say, well, I'm just not feeling it. I don't feel like I'm close to God. You need to get past your feelings. You need to get past all of the, you know, and, and, you know all of the stuff that, that could cloud your mind because the enemy wants you to think that when you do pray, God isn't hearing you. And then he also wants you to give you the impression that when we pray, it takes a long time for God to act on what we're praying about. And so these are all misconceptions that if, that if we don't appreciate the fact that God hears us, that God hears us, we will probably not pray as much as we should. Somebody hear that now, because I'm going to walk you up somewhere because I'm going to give you something tonight. If you don't understand that God hears you and that God is attentive to prayer and that God answers prayer quickly, now, I want you to write that down in your notes because I know how the enemy tries to mess with you. One, God hears, and secondly, God answers quickly. It doesn't take a long time for God to move and to answer prayer. He's God. Did y'all get that? The reason why I want you to see here is that I'm going to talk about, I, I want to share with you something that I, I believe is going to be very critical for our church in the next couple of weeks. Okay, I'm going to share something with you. So I want you to know this. One, God hears our prayers. And you don't have to be in some spiritual, you know, ecstasy to have God hear you. God listens. And when you call upon the Lord, whether that be in the morning, the afternoon, whenever that time is, God listens. And when God hears you, he answers. And he does it quickly. So that's important that you write that down because I don't want the enemy later on to rob you of that vitality in your prayer. One, God hears. And secondly, God answers quickly. No, 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 no. My dad's already thrown doubt in here. Don't listen to that. Don't listen to that. God answers quickly. You write that down. Don't, don't, don't. I don't want no other. Don't, don't put nothing else in your mind. God answers prayers quickly. God answers prayers quickly. Now, I'm not saying five minutes. Sometimes he does answer in five minutes. I'm not saying five days. Sometimes it's five weeks, but God answers quickly. 
listen, he's going to answer you quickly. Yeah. And it's going to be right on time. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, sometimes we think God's up there and, man, you really got to really, really pound heaven to get God to move. That's not true. That's not true. It's how we get to God and how we present ourselves to God and the things we bring to God that causes him to move. Amen. Amen. Somebody help me. Yeah. So we, don't ever get in your mind that God doesn't answer prayer quickly. So, uh, you know, and I don't care. Don't even let it be subjective in your mind. Just know that God answers quickly. You just got to get that. Don't let any other thought get in your mind. Because I know my dad's here, and you know, he's been you know, pre you know, preaching and pastoring a long time. And sometimes we get into old rhetoric. And it's easy. If we get our minds there, then it'll affect the way we pray. Because God will answer speedily. Right. He'll do it. Right. And if we start getting into that lax, you know, it's like I told the people of God a couple of weeks ago, that sometimes, you know, when people are ill, and I'm going to address that issue tonight. Sometimes when people are ill, we say, well, you know, if it be God's will, let them be whole. It is God's will. And, and, and if we get our minds into, into other types, you, you know, the enemy, all he has to do and this is what he does. He puts just enough doubt in your mind to get you to stop looking to God. Just enough. Just enough where if God tarries a little longer than what you think he should, we give up. That's the danger. That's the danger. Are y'all hearing me? Because sometimes we pray for things and, 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 and you know, all the enemy has to do is in a moment of, 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 of pain or bereavement, or some issue, he comes and plants the seed in your head. You see, God doesn't listen. See, God didn't hear you. God ain't hearing you. He'll hear somebody else, but he won't hear you. And so what we have to do is we have to lay a foundation that says, first of all, John said, God hears you. So, so there, the, the end of discussion, God hears you. He hears you. That's important. Church member, do you understand how, how important that is for you to grasp? That God hears you. And that's your right as a child with God. As it is any child has a right to come to their parent. Make expressions, make needs known. My kids do that to me every day. And no matter what I'm doing, I always stop to hear what they have to say. Because they're my children. And, and, and as Jesus, and as the expressions of the scripture teach, that, if, that every, every good, you know, every, even evil parents want to do good by their children. How much more your father in heaven? Right. Want to give good gifts. Okay, so, so don't let anything cross your mind. God answers and he answers quickly. He answers speedily. Jesus said he does. Jesus said he does. Jesus said if, 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 if there were, a widow went to an unjust judge and she beseeched him. Give me, you know, avenge me of my adversary. And she came until, until that unjust judge said, this woman weary me in her coming. Whatever she's asking me for, I'm going to give it to her. And then what did Jesus say? How much more your father in heaven, who when the elect of God, the children of God, cry out day and night, will he not avenge them what? Speedily. See, either Jesus is lying or he's telling the truth. Either Jesus is a liar about God or he is telling the truth. God answers quickly. And, and if you don't get that, see now, now I'm not saying there aren't hindrances, and we're going to talk about those tonight. I'm not saying that sometimes we can't hinder ourselves in prayer, because we do. But let's not confuse what we're doing with what he does. Amen. God does it fast. Right. So you, you, let's, let's, not, let's not, in other words, I don't want the church, let me tell you what happens. When we start getting into subjectivity, and men's opinions, and men's point of view, and this is my experience. Listen, I don't want to hear about your experience if it doesn't line up with what God has Amen. to say. I don't want your old-time religion. I don't want your old points of view. What does God have to say about the issue? What did Jesus say? And then I conform my mind to what the, what the mind of Christ is saying. God, Jesus said, God answers prayers speedily. That's what he says. So either Jesus is a liar, he's telling the truth. And I know, I know this much about my Bible. God is not a man that he should lie. So we have to conform ourselves. You know, over time, and I know there's many of you in here, over time, 
These things have eroded. These things have eroded in our life. These disciplines erode because we don't always see an effectiveness in it. And it's easy for us to, you know, because there are disciplines in the church that, that have been lost because the people of God are now seen using other mechanisms and finding other places of recluse rather than getting back to the things that we were taught by the early church. Amen. The early church would pray and fast. Amen. Right. Yeah, that's right. And so these things, these parts of our regeneration, and I'm saying this, th there are many other things, but I, I want to use these three things, is to say that there was a desire for God's word. Amen. Now, now, this is what I want you to do real quick, because we're going to touch into something. We're going to touch into something. Psalms, go with me real quick to Psalms 104. And, and, and I want to teach you something tonight, because you're going to need this. And, and some of you, some of you are probably really good at this. Some of you that have been in church for a long time, hopefully you're still good at this. Some of you that are new to the kingdom of heaven, you better get good at it. Are y'all hearing me? If, this, if, if you're a little new to the kingdom of heaven, let me encourage you to begin practicing meditation. Now I'm not talking about you know, there's been a, you know, we're, we're in a very spiritual society. Uh, 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 I'll give it to you, Dan, in just a second. Psalms 104, just get to 104, I'll give it to you here in a minute. We're in a, we're in a very, we're in a very spiritual society. And sometimes, you know, there's even, there's even uh, Christians who are into yoga. You better get out of that. Can I help you? We don't need Eastern meditation to find solace and peace and quietness. We find that in meditation of the Word of God. There's even some churches, and I've seen it, you can Google it, you can look on YouTube, churches where they come together and they just hum a word. I mean like a word, like Maranatha. And everybody in the church is humming it. Well, you touch them and say, that's ridiculous. That's not, that, that's not, that has nothing to do with meditation. In fact, I can almost tell you that is near demonic. We don't, we don't work on a word, we work on the word of God. This is what David did. In fact, if, are you there, Psalms 104? Let's read this together because I want, I want to drive home a very important point. Psalms 104, verse 34. Let me see if I got these, let me see. There we go. Look what it says. Psalms 104, 34 says, my meditation of what? Of him. Who's him? God. My meditation of him shall be sweet. I will be glad in the Lord. So, so I, want you to picture, I want you to picture David saying that I begin to surmise, I begin to, and I'm going to show you a scripture where he says, David said, I muse on the work of thy hands. In other words, David said, I begin to consider you. And I, and I begin to read about you to know you. Somebody say, hello, theology. Theology is a study of what? Of God. Who is he? His attributes. And he says, as I begin to look upon the stars and, 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 and gaze upon the wondrous works of thy hands, I begin to meditate on your strength, your power, your glory. And you know what? You're going to need that. Because uh, can, I, can, I, can, I, uh, can you write down an equation in, in, your, in your notes, in meditation? I'm going to show you something. The bigger God gets, and how many know God is bigger than what you think he is? I'm, I'm, well, let me, let, me, let, me, let me, everybody look at me. How many tonight know that the bigness of God is unsearchable? That the psalmist says he's, he's deeper than any ocean. In other words, you... If you couldn't fathom the depthness of his bigness, that's not even a word, but we'll just use it tonight. 
He's that big. You can't fathom God. He's that grand. Okay, so, so, so watch this. As you meditate on him, his bigness, your issue gets smaller. And that's what we're after. That's what God's after. That when we meditate on how great he is and how awesome he is and how, how terribly powerful he is, then when the situation comes up, we say, well, that's nothing to my God. See, when we stop meditating, then we get an equivalency. Then, then the problem looks bigger than our God. Meditation is a spiritual discipline that we should be meditating on him all day long. Because when whatever comes and whatever comes our way, we have meditated in such a way. Because we don't know what tomorrow holds. You don't know what tonight holds. You don't know what may happen at the stroke of, of midnight. But you better be ready. And the only way that I could tell you to be ready is to meditate on God. Meditation. 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 God, you are you're so great. You're so grand. You're so awesome. You're powerful. Right? Now, I know I have access to you. As we laid that point down, we have access to him. Look, if God is that big and that strong, and if you go outside and see the work of his hands, don't you think that God could answer your situation quickly? Our faith should already be primed for God to, to, to move. And that's why I always say the, the attitude of our church should be one of expectancy. And when there is an expectancy, I know there hasn't been any praise. Because praising God, worshiping the Lord, meditating on him is all an expression of his bigness so that when the little things of life come we're in preparation for it we've been prepared somebody say hallelujah man that's rich that's rich in in spiritual history look go with me to psalms 143 i mean there's bunches of these scriptures i mean if you if you wanted to to and i'm hoping you will go through and and and, and look at it psalms 143 verse 5 Look what, look, what, look what David says, Psalms 143, verse 5 says, I remember the days of old. I meditate on all thy works. I muse on the work of thy hands. Musing is to meditate in silence. He just got alone and just thought about how great God he is. It's important, church family. It's important for us. That's really important. That's so important for our lives. That we meditate. Somebody say God answers quickly. Yeah, let's just get that in our heads, can we? Let's get out of all that old garbage. That old garbage is keeping us from doing what is required of us. Psalms, uh, uh, write down Psalm 77. Well, let me see. I didn't write down the, I actually was reading this. Uh, let me see here. Here we go. You there? Verse 11 and 12. I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember thy wonders of old. I will meditate also of all thy work and talk of thy doings. You see that? Are y'all there? So, so this, was a, this was an act that David was involved in, meditation on God. Now, if, if you have an opportunity, you, uh, some of you that have, you know, internet access, put, some, put in their scriptures on God's glory. Put in their scriptures on God's strength and start reciting those, putting those before you, letting those scriptures be part of your daily meditation and you're going to find out that when we meditate on God, we become a lot more effective in our faith. Your faith will rise. Somebody say hallelujah. Okay, you ready to go a little further? Prayer. Listen, I almost, I almost want to say, and, and please forgive me for saying this, but I almost, want, I almost want to say, until we know who God is, 
or at least have some facsimile of what, what God is capable of doing, you're probably not going to be a good prayer warrior. You're probably not going to pray effectively. Because your faith, the, the Bible says that if a man prays and doubts what he prays for, the Bible says that man is, is unstable. In other, in other words, he hasn't fixed his mind on God. Y'all understand that? That, 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 that? that the same thing happened with Peter when, when he was walking on water. As long as he stayed focused on Jesus, he could do the impossible. But when his eyes turned from the Lord, he began to sink. Jesus called him faithless. Are y'all with me? Because prayer, you know, meditation is really, is really the, the elevation of our prayer. This, this theology that is so missing in our churches and in our culture, the, the, the aspect of the discipline of concentrating on God, keeping thy eyes single. The Bible says if we keep our eyes single, our whole body shall be full of life. Okay. This process of meditation is key if we're going to be able to pray. You know, I don't see Lupita here, Martin, they may be next door. I don't see my mother-in-law. She's probably next door. Y'all have heard their testimonies, right? I told them, give me one week to pray. I needed one week because I wanted to investigate the scriptures. I, I wanted to, like a good paralegal, I wanted to get my case together. I wanted to investigate it. And I needed to make sure that I could beseech God and have the wherewithal to beseech God because I meditated on who he is. I, I cut through, I got, got through the chase and said, this is the will of God. Amen. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. You know what, the Bible says that we have this confidence that if we pray, God hears us and will give to us anything according to what? His will. And I had to come to a conclusion, is it the will of God or not? And, and I'm telling you, there's a lot of things that are in the will of God for you. But we haven't obtained it yet because you haven't gone through the meditation of making certain that he'll answer that. How, how many know Jesus said, how many understand what importunity is? The, the Bible says that there was a man who had a friend. And, and he, the, the friend had a friend visit him late at night. And as it was the custom to have a friend, they would greet them with food. And when he went to his cupboard to find bread, there was no bread. So the friend went over to the friend's house to knock on his door in the middle of the night. And he was already asleep with his family in one bed. And he banged on the door and said, friend, I'm in need of bread. Now his friend says, go away. I'm already asleep. I'm already with my family. I'm not getting up. But because of his importunity, in other words, because he realized that his friend could go nowhere else and that he was the only source. Jesus said the friend will rise and give to him that loaf of bread. This is how we find our importunity with God. Because we come to the one conclusion that it is only you, God, Because listen, if you think that you're going to have God beseech for you, if you think you're going to get God to move for you, and you have a plan B, guess what? You can go to your plan B right now. Just go ahead and go to your plan B, church family. Go to your plan B. If you've got a plan B for your problem, you don't need God. So just go ahead and go to plan B. Just write, write that down. Say, Pastor, said I can go to plan B. I, I, I encourage you to go to plan B. I, I, I pray that you run to your plan B. Go get it. Go, go serve your plan B. Go, go run and get it. Because what I'm going to tell you is that God will use your plan B to show you just how deficient you are. And he does that because God says, listen, listen God says, I want to be plan A. You, you know what? We have a God who says, I want to do it. Oh, y'all didn't hear me. I'm convinced that God wants to do it for me. So why would I involve my strength in things that God has said I'll do for you and can do it a thousand times better than you could do it on your best day? Come on, somebody. So importunity is gained because we've meditated. And we know that we can't get it unless God gives it. Are y'all there? Yeah. Are y'all there? Listen, I'm here to tell you that if you are not there, I pray that as early as 
the dismissal of this service that a problem come into your life where you will say, if God does not move, I will die. I pray that come to your life. If God doesn't move on behalf of my child, my child will surely pass away. If God does not move on behalf of my brother, my sister, they will surely be consumed. See, because if we don't get ourselves in that attitude, if we don't get ourselves in that frame of mind, church family, the enemy will devour you and quickly. Because I'm here to tell you he's already in your situation. And he's been working in that situation. And let me tell you something, you can't touch him because you don't got the spiritual hands to do it. Because you've never seen the devil, you don't know how he works, you don't know how he lurks, you don't know his tricks, his schemes, he's already out-schemed you, and whatever you try to do to get back at him, he's already one-upped you. The only person that can fight that roaring lion is the Lion of Judah. Come on, somebody. Somebody say, I've got another lion, and he's the Lion of Judah. He's going to win my battle. Yeah. Are y'all with me? So, so listen, church, the things that are happening in life, I was sharing with Pastor Josh, one of the things I share with Pastor when we're praying for Miss Debbie, there are things bigger than us. Do you understand that, that life is bigger than you and the things that go in therein are bigger than you and, and on your best day you can't solve them even if you had all the knowledge in the world? God needs to step in. There are things just that way. I'm, I'm, I'm 46 years old, and I know there are things that are going on in my world that unless God intervenes, right. I'll see nothing of it. And so, but when I get into the meditation of it, God said, I'll fight that for you. Yeah. I'll fight that for you. Because you know, you know what? You know who can subdue the enemy? Yeah. You know who can shut his mouth? He, he's all, Father, you already, ahead, you already know his schemes. That's what David used to say, that the, the enemy has, has laid snares for me. But Lord, you know of them. You'll guide my feet. Come on, somebody. You know, so meditation is the process that prepares a man or woman to pray effectively because we know God can and we know he will. Are y'all ready? You see prayer? Prayer. God can and he will. Write that down. That's what prayer is. Prayer is God can and he will. Now, you know what? If you can't receive that, you probably haven't been meditating. So don't dismiss me as just some, some ragamuffin, some vagabond. I'm telling you out of experience that, that God can and he will. And better yet, can I say it, God can and he wills. Do you know there's nothing that God wills that man can stop? Are, are, you, are you aware that when God wills, God said, if I was to scoop up a man, who can take him from my arms, from out of my right hand? L listen, Prayer is, prayer is, God can and he wills. Did you write that down in your notes? Because I'm, I'm going to give you something. These two things, because meditation is the word in action. Meditation is, I've thought about the works of old. Father, I've seen, I've read about you, I've heard about you. I know that your word who you are, meditation, the word of God in action, meditation. I'm masticating, I'm chewing. The Bible says the word of God is quick, powerful, sharper than two-edged sword, dividing the center of soul and spirit, penetrating deep into the joints and marrow of a man or a woman. It's the word of God being masticated, chewed on. Listen, you got to do this before you get over here. Come on, somebody. You know, because, you know, you ever, have, you ever have somebody, and this happens to me a lot, somebody says, I'll pray for you. I'm, sometimes I feel like saying, just save your breath, man. I don't need your prayer. Because you could, you could discern the hollowness in it. Because I don't want you to, before you go to bed, oh, Lord, 
I lay my head down, sleep, pray my, my soul to keep. If I die before I wake, you know, uh, man, you can keep that, man. Oh, and, and, and bless the pastor. Amen. Go to sleep. You can keep that. I don't need that prayer. That, that's nothing. Mm-mm. Mm. Shallow, thank you. Just shallow stuff. No, it don't. That, that's not how, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about, I'm talking about a born again prayer. Amen. Where it's mixed with love. And we're beseeching, we're talking to God because the Father say, I know you will. And we get it, we get into these deep meditations for one another and we're praying and we're believing. Right? This is what the church, when we come together, listen, when we, when we walk through the doors, there should be a lot of meditation coming in. People who have spent the week, you know, meditating on God, and, and, and when we come together, there's a lot of faith yes. that needs to be just released yes. or we just explode. Yes. Yes. Kind of like a bottle that's full of soda, you shook it up. You know, when there's a meditation on the things of God and, and people are in that process, that's how, that's how the church becomes the church. Yeah. That's how the church becomes full of power uh -huh. because we're in the process of meditating yeah. so that when we pray, we have this attitude, God can and he wills. Yes, right? right? Y'all get that? Th these two things, these two things, meditation and prayer, are, are, are essential elements of warfare y'all ready it's right down there. these are elements of warfare pastor josh we, we you know we, we, when you came we were talking about that a couple days ago for miss debbie how these are these are essential elements of warfare right i'm, I'm certainly not telling my sister and all let's just see what happens i've already come to the decision that god can and he will or I wouldn't be praying. You know, because you know what? You know what people will do? You, you, you know what? You know, let me tell you what's easy to do. Let me tell you what's easy to do. Can, can, let me tell you what's easy to do. Just, Jill, okay, I won't be praying for you. Lord will. That's like, that's like me just saying, put in, you know, instead of taking the role of carrying the burden, I'll just say, well, let's see what the Lord wants to do. So we just dismiss it in saying, oh, God will do it. Because if he wants to, he'll do it anyway. Do you really believe that? Do you really believe, church family, that if we just say, Let, well, if the Lord wants it, he can get it for himself. Let me say it one more time. This is how we treat God. God, if you want it, Get it for yourself. That's what, that's what, what will, let the Lord will be done. Shouldn't we know the Lord's will? Isn't that what we pray? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. What does the Bible say that when many are going to come in that last day saying, Lord, Lord, we did many wonderful things in thy name. We, we, we cast out devils. We prophesied in Jesus' say, Depart from me, workers of iniquity. You never did the will. Uh -huh. Listen, how long have we been in church and we still don't know what God wants? I'll, I'll look myself in the mirror 1,000 times before I'll look you in the face one time to tell you the very same thing. Because I look myself in the mirror all the time and ask the very same question. Pastor, what is the will of God? Uh -huh. Amen. When I go to prayer, I need to know what God's will is if I'm going to pray the right prayer. Amen. Because God's going to give me what's his will. Uh -huh. And so he says, you need to know what the will of God is. It, doesn't the Bible say that it's incumbent upon the church to know what? The perfect will of the Lord. And how do we know that? When we get to know him. You know, the other day, my, my little sister Margo, she was at the house. And we were laughing because we were talking about something, and we were talking about old school candy bars. And I said, man, the other day, Pastor Josh, we was coming back. Where were we at, Pastor Josh? We were coming back from somewhere, and you got a zero. 
We were coming back from Waco. We went to go see Daniel play here in a playoff game. And we stopped, and Pastor Josh got a zero. I said, man, you like them old zeros? Yeah, man. How many know what a zero is? Uh -huh. Not too many people know what a zero is, right? <laughs> uh, yes, a couple days ago, we went to, went to a little popcorn store, and, and, and Alexis wanted a chicka stick. How many remember chicka sticks? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, most folks don't remember stuff like that. They're new kids. They don't know what a chicka stick is. I like Big Hunk. How many remember Big Hunk? Big Hunk is good, man. So we were laughing, and then, and then, and then Margo, you know, I said, I started thinking, I said, man, I said, I think, she said, yeah, bro, he, that's his favorite, them zero, that's what he likes. And, I, and then she says, Margo looked at me, she says, you know what? You like paydays. Hey, that's your favorite candy bar. I said, you know what, Margo, you're right. It is my favorite candy bar. She goes, and if there's not a payday, I'd buy you a Snicker. I said, you know what? You're right. If I didn't want a payday, I'd probably want a Snicker. You know? I said, man, Margo, I said, how'd you know that? She says, man, I've been, I've been knowing you since I was a little girl. <laughs> I've been following you since I've been six, seven years old. I know your favorite sodas. I know your favorite candy bars. And, and I said, man, Margo, you're right. How long have we been following God? Uh, we don't know his favorite. So that we could go to the Lord in such faith and say, Father, I'm praying because I know that I know that I know that this is a favorite thing you like to do. Amen. And I'm here because I know this is your will. Yes. Father, look what's going on. Father, look from heaven. Gaze your eyes down. Look, Lord. Because that's what he wants. In all of the Bible, God has always used a vessel. God has never acted on himself. There, show me one scripture where God of himself came down and intervened for himself and then went back up into heaven and nobody knew about it. Does he not always search out a vessel to communicate what he desires so that that vessel can carry forth the very work and plan of God? That's what the church is. The church is that local expression right here in Grand Prairie. And if we had it right, we wouldn't need a hospital here. That is the truth. And if we had it right, people that had really serious issues and addictions and problems, they'd stop by, they'd stop by Harvest Temple first before they went over to check into the Mayo Clinic, before they went over to that little, you know, that, that, that crazy hospital. They said, you need to go check them folk out over there. They know what God wants over at that house. And that's what the house of God has always been. Jesus said, my, you know, Jesus made a branded, he, he unbranded rope and whipped what? Those money changers out. And what did he say about the house of God? The house of God shall always be what? A house of prayer. prayer. Because prayer is the, is the indication that we know what God wants. Come on, somebody. Come on. Have, how many of ever, how many of you ever went to, uh, the other day I, I, I went and, and I'm not going to say who it was, I went to a soccer game and the people that were playing the soccer were not very good. And it was boring. I mean, boring. And you keep trying to say, you need to go that way. And they're kicking the ball, it's going out of bounds. And, and you know, I, I know the, the Sanchez, they can appreciate being at a playing a game where people don't know what they're doing because your daughter plays soccer. How frustrating it can be. And you're looking at it and you're saying, do these people know what they should be doing? And people become disenfranchised. They lose interest. And then what sh it should be becomes something else. And that's what I think is happening at the church. I, I think the church is now, because we're, we're, we don't know how to connect to God through the vehicle, so now church is something else. Let's, let, 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 let's make big programs. Let's, let's, put in, let's get a disco light. Let, 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 let's get a projector machine. Let's, let's make a big jungle gym for the kids. Like if they don't know how to play already. And so we're disenfranchised with what really was the power, and now we've regressed, and we've made our own substitute for the things that actually were the tried and true things of the early church, which were meditation. I'm going to give you the third one here in a minute. Y'all with me? 
Meditation is key. Prayer is an act of saying God can, he will, and he's going to do it real fast. And I want you to be in that frame of mind. I want you to be in that frame of mind. I'm going to give you something here. God can, he will, and he's going to do it fast. Will you write that down? God can, he will, and he'll do it fast. Because you know what, church? You know, and I've heard people say this. You know, my wife, you know, we talk a lot about these sort of things. There's people that say, Pastor, I've been praying for 30 years. And I'm like, man, really? Wow. And you're praying to God? And God has put you on hold for 30 years when you only live 70 You weren't awake for the first 20 years of your life. How many of you know you were just a fool the first 20? So just, how, how many here are 40 years old? 40 years old or older? Okay, subtract 20. Because those first 20, they were just, you didn't know nothing. Okay. So now you kind of know a little something after 20, maybe a little tad, tidbit, you know. And then now we are where we are. And in all that, in that little space of time, have we not gleaned enough to be able to formulate or think through or, or, or establish some premise in our knowledge of God? And you know what? We, we, you know, I, I'm here to tell you, church, I, I know what it is you know, to, to, to hear people say, Pastor, I've been praying for a long time and thinking, man, you, didn't, you, you lose the first 20 and then these last 30, so you spent really all your life praying and God hasn't answered you? What are you ending your prayer in Lucifer's name or what? Church, can I ask you, can we all be, let's all be serious for a minute. I just want you to think the, think the thought through. If it takes God 30 years to get something done, you know what? I'm just going to go talk to Buddha. No, better yet, better yet, I'll just do it myself, Josh. I'll just do it the best. I'll just put it together. I know it's going to be you know, through hook and crook, but I'll just put it together the best way I can if it takes 30 years. You know, David said, Lord, you know my frame. You know I'm but dust. The length of my years are maybe 70, and if by chance you give me 80, they're filled with grief. How I many you know when you get past 70, you're not what you used to be? You may think you are, but you're not. Try to run. See what happens. Your whole leg might just fall off. <laughs> Just, just fall off like one of them zombies. Just, just try to accelerate and see if you don't twist your ankle or break a bone or something. Hip just coming in three different dislocation and everything. Doc said, "What were you doing? Jogging?" <laughs> I was walking, trying to fast walk. Listen, I'm here to tell you. Listen, I want the church to know it doesn't take God 30 years to answer prayer. And if anybody ever tells you that, say, "Listen, you don't know how to pray." And you have my permission to tell them that. Either you don't know how to pray or you're hindering yourself somewhere in prayer. Because how many, how many know, how many did they know that when we come boldly, the, the expression when you go back and study it, that the Bible says that we have a new and living way that was open to us through the flesh of Christ. They didn't say, you know, like the veil, which is his flesh. The Bible says we could come boldly. We come boldly. Why do we come boldly? Because we know what we're going to ask him, he's going to do it. Because we already know it's his will. How many can say amen to that? Listen, you're not going to, how, how, many, how many have ever asked so, something of somebody and what you were asking, you knew they had it? Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. Because I know they have it. And I'm going to press it because I know they have it. My mom's laughing because she knows there's some stories concerning that sort of pressing in my past. If I know you got it, I'm going to get it. <laughs> Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. I'm not the only one like that. I know you're like that too. Listen, I I'm not going to ask God for something that he hasn't already declared in his word that he's going to do it. So all I got to do is bring back to God what he said about himself and say, Father, this is what you said. So, so I want you to see that, that, that I want you to, 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 
to allow your heart and mind to gather around meditation and prayer. They're together. They work together. Now, these are warfare. These are, these are instruments of warfare. Are y'all ready for me to add the last one? Okay. Now, I don't know much about bomb making. I know some of y'all probably made a bomb, pipe bomb. I don't, I don't know all y'all's past. But, but I'm going to give you, you know, some, you know, my wife used to tell me, man, you got a short fuse. How many here have a, somewhat of a short fuse? I say somewhat. In other words, your fuse is, you know, you, you, ever, you, ever, you ever get a, buy some, some fireworks and you try and light the fuse, don't want to light? Everybody ever been there? And you just, you know, you, you're trying to run from it, but still trying to light it. But how many know there's a good fuse when you hit it? Shh, 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 that means, man, that fuse is, fa- it's a fast fuse. And it's ready, it's dry, it's ready to be ignited. Right? Because we know when that fuse, when the fuse is on, what do we know is about to happen? Something about to go off, something about to explode. We just need a fuse. Right? So you can have, you can have, you know, you can have the, you know, you we use a firecracker, you can have the, 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 the paper roll tightly. You can put the, the what you call it, the gunpowder, the, what, what is that stuff called? Gunpowder? So what is it, like a powder? The gunpowder. And you can put them all together, but something's missing. Need a fuse. Y'all want to see the fuse? Boy, is that a lost discipline in the church. Particularly in America. Where as soon as we eat lunch, what are we going to have for dinner? Anybody finish lunch and say, hey, we're, having, we're eating, making such such for dinner. Anybody ever done that? You just eat lunch and you're already thinking, man, what's going on for dinner tonight? You know, there's other parts of the world where they get a meal. They don't know when the next meal's coming from. Fasting. Fasting is the fuse. Sunday night, I'm going to tell you how to fast. Because Sunday night, I'm going to tell you what we need to fast about in our church. And it's going to happen fast. Because we're going to light the fuse. We got the paper, we got the powder, we just need some pop. Come on, all right? So we're going to talk about that Sunday night. We're going to talk about how to fast. I'm going to show you how to put it together. And I'm going to give you three things we're going to fast for as a church, okay? Because there's some things we need to see happen quickly. Let me say quickly. Now watch this. How many tonight... And I want you to say this out of sincerity. You need a miracle in your life. Okay. Um, uh, Julio, come. Brother Connell, can you come for a minute? I want you to make a line right here. Uh, if you get some chairs, and put a line right here. Put a line right here of chairs facing the people. Don't leave yet because we've got to pick up offerings. I ain't playing. We got to make up for last week's budget. Somebody say hallelujah. I'm going to give what I got to give to the Lord. Here at Harvest Temple, I don't got to stretch the people to give. Y'all know what to do. Y'all been trained up. Y'all aren't like, y'all aren't babies. That's what I like about Harvest Temple, man. You come in here, you're going to get what you, you're going to, you're going to grow up. Now, you can go to some of them baby churches and just waddle around and, and eat, eat, eat cotton candy all you want. You come to Harvest Temple, you're going to grow up in here. Okay. Who needs a miracle done? Just kind of come sit down. Who else? S- uh, Sister, uh, uh, Sister Jeannie, you raise your hand. Come, come sit down. Who else? Sister Castillo. Here we go. Sister Jill, you coming? You need a miracle done in your life? 
All right. I'm going to give each one of you a chance. Here we go. Pulled out just the right number of chairs. Y'all shove a bun and make room for each other. Now I'm going, to, I'm going to read something to you, church. In fact, why don't you go with me to Galatians 6. Galatians 6, I want to read something to you. Galatians 6, I want, you to, I want you to hear me say this, look what it says here, bear ye one another's burden, and so fulfill the law of Christ. Now, I've got one, two, three, four, five. Five, six, seven. Are y'all same coming for the same thing or different? Yes. Seven, eight, nine. Did I get that right? Nine people in our church who need God to do a miracle. Now, I want to tell you something. My God does miracles. That's what He does. Simple as that. And people who need miracles need to come to church to get them. They need to come to the house of God. How many know that to be true? How many know that the house of the Lord is, is important, right? Over the years, we've lost this. This has been lost in ministry. You know why? Because this takes time. And I really don't want to know too much about you, Scano. I just want to say hi to you when I come to church. Oh, how you doing, Scano? Okay, God bless you. I pray the Lord keep you. Amen. See you later. Oh, oh, how are you doing, Sister Mother? Oh, you're so sweet. Oh, I love you. Okay, God bless you. Say hi to the fan for me. Okay, catch you next Sunday. Oh, Sister Jenny, how you been doing? Okay, you, you look so nice. Oh, praise the Lord. God bless you. Can I borrow $5? <laughs> this is what we've been reduced to as a ministry. That's why when the world looks at the church, you know what they say? You, you, you know what they think about us? We come together for the social aspect of Jesus Christ. Not for the power of Christ, but because we have a social a attitude and aptitude. You know, spiritually speaking, and we come together, our social club is church on Sunday morning. And this is where our little friends, our little sphere is. We come together. We're going to have a little Christmas banquet come to our Christmas program. You're going to enjoy it. The kids are going to sing and you have a good time. Then afterwards, we'll give you a bag of candy, give you an orange and an apple and some candy and send you on your way. No, hey, I'm not against the Christmas program. Don't be looking at me all ugly. Because your kid is the star. We want your kid to do good in the Christmas. But listen, that's not what the church is about in, in, its, in its entirety. This is what we do. Now, somebody's trying to get in. Hallelujah. This is what we're about. Now, I know that you can't take all of these people on at once, but you can grab one of these and say, I'm going to meditate. I'm going to leave this church today with one of these people in my heart. And I'm going to go find the scripture. And I'm going to train myself like a paralegal. And I'm going to find out how to get what Sister Sharon needs from God, and then I'm going to lay it before God until I see her get her breakthrough. Because I love her, and she's my sister in the Lord. This is how the church maintains vitality. This is how we maintain our health. This is how we do work in the kingdom of heaven such that when we see God enter into the kingdom I prepared for you before the foundations of the world. Because we were doing the law of Christ, fulfilling it. Listen, I, I'm going to let them each speak. And, and, and I want each one of you, you know, we don't want to hear the whole story because your story is too long. I want you to tell the people what you need God to do. Let the people of God go back. So we've got nine people here with probably 40 people looking on. 
and we're going to leave here. I'm going to leave here. Hearing your petition. <laughs> 